Welcome back to the Stand Up and Shout Rock Show. Coming to you live from the Salisbury Center Studios on Wild, the Wild Style Network, fueled by Monster Energy. We're back. We are back. Woo-woo. And, uh, you know, a couple episodes back, we did a, a, a little game called Heard and Word. Heard and Word. We got two, it's a, we're going to do two games. Yes. We're, we're doubling down on the games today. But we're, we're going to do Heard and Word a little oh, bit later in the oh, program. All right. We're going to do Heard. We're not. So we, we just threw a curve to Scott because Scott launched up the Heard and Word. Heard and Word. Did what that go f- out a lot? Was that on air? Heard and Word? No. Okay. Oh, we never went. Well, we, oh, Heard and Word never went out. This okay. will be the first time that so, people yeah. will hear Heard and Word. went out, didn't it? So, so, yeah. so yeah, no, yeah. I meant, did you just put the no, graphic up? Oh, yeah. okay. It doesn't matter. We can do yeah. Heard and Word now. No, no. I was yeah. just kind of promoing what was coming <laughs> a little right, later in the you. show. And, All right. But, uh, so we're rolling we have, out a new game. We have a new game, yes. Yeah. yeah. What are the odds? What are the odds? What, and, we, and we're calling it specifically the Motley Crue edition because we talked Motley Crue. This, it's obviously huge news. We got about, what, 10 minutes or so that we were able to talk about it the last time that we yep. talked about it, what, a couple weeks ago, because yep. we were talking to a lot of bands. Yeah. But now we can really talk some Motley Crue because it continues, the storm continues to rage. Oh, it's it's better than the Real Housewives of the Sunset Strip. Yeah, it absolutely. Is, it just keeps getting more and more interesting. So, so yeah. So, so uh, I, first of all, is, so are they able to see the slideshow, Scott? Uh, we do a little bit of editing, yeah. Okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm not to throw that because I'm looking at it and I don't like it anymore because I just saw the Heard and Word slideshow and I like that the fonts are way better in that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, shit. Well, I saw that edit before it goes up. <laughs> <laughs> I got to redraw this. This game is not looking good. It's my fault, everybody. It looks so stale. It looks so. A little- Looks a little rushed. It does. It, yeah, I, was, I did it. At like we'll have to put out this version so that everybody can see how bad it is. <laughs> right. And I, I put out the edited version. I, I have to admit, I put this together at eight thirty on a Saturday morning, so that's probably why it does. I, I was not in fun party mode. I was just like, knock the shit out. Yeah. So I mean, doesn't look good. I'm sorry. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry. When you actually see this, though, it's going to look great. All right. But, but no, the, the conversation will be great. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, just kind of brief synopsis. So, um, obviously, Mick announced, what, eight months ago? Ten months? I'd say more like eight. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I About think it's eight, relatively newer. Eight months ago that he could no longer tour mm-hmm. and that he was leaving Motley Crue as a touring member of the band. Yes. And at the time, the thought was that if Motley continued to record albums, Mick would be part of that. And... But he just was not going to tour with the band anymore. And then they announced the European leg of the Stadium Series tour that they're in right now. And they announced John Five as the guitar player for the touring part of Motley Crue. Yes. And then things kind of went crazy, I guess. And Mick claims that the band is cutting him out of his 25% of touring revenue, merchandise. And he gets a quarter. Yeah. Cornerstone member of the band, four of them, 25%. Easy math. One of only two beginning to end members of the band. Yes. So the point that, but, and yeah. so they were edging him out. Glad you brought that up because I'm going to bring that up when we play this yeah. game. Cool. Yeah. Um, you know, and so then Motley fired back that Mick couldn't play anymore. You know, and then Mick fired back that he was the only member of the band that was playing live and the rest of them were using backing tracks and it's just gotten nastier and nastier and nastier. Yes. So we've got, what are the odds? So what are the odds? So like uh, in, in reference to all of the story that Kevin just told you. So like when we ask these questions, so let me ask you this when we do one of the odds, it's going to be easiest for you guys. because We could do odds like classic Vegas odds, like two to one as an example, or we could do like a percentage like 50%. Would you rather do percentages or Vegas odds? Well, you have to get no book wagering in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if they can give us odds on them All right. uh, moving forward. But right. I think percentage. percentage. We'll go percentages. Yeah. All right. I, I like percentages too. They're just a little yeah. bit, you know, math friendly. We'll do a, a crossover show with no book wagering and do the, what are the odds? Love it. Yeah. There All right. Go. All right. So as we're a third, so, I, so since I'm throwing this out, the, I threw out the game poorly graphics poorly graphically designed here I'll, I'll kick off and i'll just go ahead and poorly give, grammar too yeah, yeah exactly right everything because i'm right i'm embarrassed i'm like fumbling over my own words because i'm so embarrassed 
over this whole thing. Aren't you like an English teacher or something? I have an English minor, but I there never taught go. English. All right. <laughs> yeah. There you I, go. I don't know what I'm speaking. It's not English. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, first odds question. Although we're working percentages, what are the odds that John Five permanently replaces McMars in percentages? And I'm going to give you my answer first because I throw it out there first. I'm going to say zero. Zero percent chance that John Five permanently replaces Mick Mars. First of all, because you brought up the, you know, you brought up the fact that there have been on and off, you know, ins and outs. I'm like now I'm tripping over every word because it's in my head. On and out, ins and outs between multiple members of Motley Crue over the years. To me, this Mick Mars thing feels like the Tommy Lee thing and feels like the Vince Neil thing. And the Vince Neil thing was probably as much of a hurricane. Oh, as yeah. the Mick Mars thing back in the day, for yes. those of you that remember that, uh, Tommy Lee was a little bit more understated, I feel. Yeah. But the uh, the uh, this one to me is just as big as that. But I instead of like kind of really kind of focusing on that to me for this odds, why I go to the big the big squadoosh, the big zero, is because of John Five. I don't think that John Five. I think he's just too much of his own person to he be a part, a permanent him. part of Motley Crue. Hired I think hired gun. He's a hired gun, exactly. To go to that, that's another great documentary. Absolutely. Yeah, so he's hes an interesting hired gun. He's almost like a Rudy Sarzo to me. He's like, you know, there's a very top-tier hired gun. You know what you're going to oh, get yeah. with him, and he's almost his own personality. And I just think that this is obviously just a new creative endeavor for him, and I think he's enjoying it. But Probably enjoying the paychecks more than anything. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and kind of seeing John 5 and knowing John 5 – He's just going to keep going. That's kind of my thing, and that's why yep. I go to zero. Uh, I would you, say 20%. Wow. Wow, that's high. Because, well, we'll get to the my opinion on the next. I think it's the next slide. But, but yeah, I think uh, while I agree that members have come in and come out, the, it's, it seems it, it is much nastier, and what's going on, is what I've seen divide families and businesses and other things. And that's money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when Vince left, it was, you're not showing up. You're always late. We can't find you. You suck. No, you suck. And they just kind of, at least that's kind of what was put out publicly. Mm -hmm. And then he just, they're like, you're out of the, you're fired. I, I quit. And, and they eventually, you know, reconciled and got back in. Sure. I don't know. That, and I don't, well, mate, I'll just leave it at 20%. All right. All right. Solid 20. You got, you got a, you got a percentage there, Jeff? I think lower 10%. I just don't think it's going to work out. Yeah. 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 I just don't think he fits in with the band. And he's again, like I said, a very good hired gun, but still a hired gun. Yes. And a very creative hired gun. Yeah. 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 And they did, they released a, a picture on Instagram this week that was, uh, and interestingly enough, because there are rumors that Vince is going to be booted out of the band too. Right. But so it was a, an image of Nikki and John Five and and Tommy, and looked like they were working on some stuff. And the caption was "New Crew?" Question mark. Right. Like they were starting to work on some songs. So right. Right. Um, right. I, I found that interesting as well. They're bringing right. John Karabi back. Right. <laughs> I still love John Karabi. I love John Karabi too. Yeah. It doesn't seem like he hasn't he doesn't have much love for Motley Crue. I don't know. No, yeah. he, he fit <laughs> yeah. well with them, but yeah. I actually like the stuff that they did. I love that album. Awesome. I like that Motley Crue album. An awesome singer. Yeah, I love Smoke the Sky, awesome Hooligans yeah. Holiday, two great songs. Yeah. 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 Those there was the songs they released, but yeah. there's yeah, great album. And I'm not I'm not embarrassed by that graphic by and think when we get to the pictures that's going to make me feel better about these slides we're looking at just for the record. All right. Yeah. Slide number two. All right. The next odds that are out there. What are the odds? I'm going to let you let you kick off this. I'm going to kick off the last one. Yep. What are the odds that Mick Mars returns to Motley Crue? Because we had low odds for the last one, so this must mean there needs to be a replacement at some point. What are the odds going to be, Mick? It's 0%. Wow. You went to zero. No, and I think it's all about the money. Yeah. And, and uh, I mentioned <laughs> it, and we, we talked about it off air. Um, you know, there's all this going back and forth, and I, it, it appeared... So there was an article in Variety that came out this week. I think it was Variety, um, where uh, Mick's camp 
was reporting. So apparently there were depositions collected before any of this started mm. by the Motley Crew people. Mm -hmm. Members of the production team were putting in affidavits or depositions talking about Nick's inability to continue as a musician. Mm -hmm. And and so when Mick filed his suit, I don't know if they knew about it or they thought potentially this would happen, but it was reported that all the, the members of the production team, you know, basically signed affidavits that he couldn't play. He couldn't remember where he was. He couldn't remember what song was next. He would start playing parts of different songs, beginning, hmm. middle, end. Hmm. And the comment, you know, the thought is, well, why would they do that? Mm -hmm. you know, what's the benefit of that other than, you know, those people are being paid by the Motley Crue organization. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of alluded to the fact that they were being pushed to, to put this information out for mm -hmm. the potential lawsuit that might be coming. Um, but it was also then leaked that, and, and obviously had to come from someone on Mick's side, there was an in-ear monitor recording released yes. from out on the stadium series, and it was ultimateguitar.com actually released the story with the video and, uh, you know, basically saying, this is not true, you mm -hmm. know, and I guess he plays to a click track in his ears while he's performing. And this is the clip here of Nick's actual guitar from his in-ear monitor to girls, girls, girls. Yep. I was going to say, I recognize and, him right out of the gate. You know, sounds pretty good to me. Sure. And it was basically authenticated from... I think someone on Mick's production side that yes, this this is legit. Uh huh. This that was him playing. Yeah. And uh, we weren't in the vocal part of it, but you could kind of hear Vince's vocals, and it was pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. But you know, when and that's primal scream. Yeah. But. uh you know, he, he generally sounded okay when we yeah. saw him stadium yep. series. Yeah. And then we started hearing the reports that, oh, no, there were – Tommy was playing with backing tracks. Vince was playing with backing tracks, which kind of would make sense if if it's a mixture of a good recording and, and live. Right. That's so, why, why I love this game because I'm going to go opposite direction you. I'm going to give this 90%. 90%. No way. Yes, because you know why – We've seen this show before. This is what Motley Crue does. And I'm going to go back to your piece about money. It comes back to money. Motley Crue makes the most money when all four of them are out there. And you know that because that's what we like to see. And I think you see even more of it, right? It was just as bad. It was just as ugly with Vince. And then, of course, they all got back together because there was a lot of money on that table if they all would come back together. So I even think that with all the nasty that you brought up, if the right amount pile of money sitting on the table, all of that can be forgiven and all of them will get back out there on that stage. The only reason that I wouldn't even go 100% is just simply because of the sad fact is mixed health. So I, there could be maybe a limited type of maybe live appearance that you see. Like you see some, uh, like I think of the Scorpions that are really not doing like a full on you know, road tour, but then they'll do festivals and other type of one-offs. A residency. A residency, exactly. I could see easily see something like that, and I would expect to see something like that which from Motley Crue because this is just what they do within the next five to ten years. I like the theory, but I just feel like his health is just so bad that he's not going to be able to come back. Yeah. that's Otherwise, I swear I'd be at 100%. Yeah. I mean, if he was able to... I just feel like his bones are fusing together. He's not going to be able to come back mm -hmm. no matter how much he wants to or how much they want him to or how much they need the money. Right. But I don't think he's going to be capable of it. If he would, how thrilled would everybody in that audience oh, be? Of course. Oh, yeah. 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 We Everybody wants to see crew, no matter how bad Vince sounds, no matter click tracks, anything. Yeah. It's crew. Right. Anybody that's our age that grew up on metal. They, they want to see crew. No matter you want how to see bad it all is, four it matter. And they really kind of set this tone, right? Because they, they really haven't had any real permanent replacements. There were some, like we, we brought up John Karabi that did one album. Yeah. And then you saw in that, everybody wanted to see those four members back. And when yeah. they did, you know, it was Generation Swine followed. 
Yep. I believe it was Generation Swine that followed. Not necessarily their, well, their... Yeah, and then brand new tattoo, but Tommy wasn't on that. Exactly. Was he was gone. Yeah, so it wasn't necessarily... To me, well, we're going to... I'm going to start moving into the next slide. You know, you get to their... To their, their their better album of Saints of Los Angeles to me, which is kind of a good return to the the old crew sound as we're talking about with Metallica, yeah. you know, right. and those kind of classic albums, that kind of piece. You see that kind of like up and down with Motley Crue, but yeah, so I'm, that's where I'm going. Ninety, I'm going the opposite direction. Right. We were, I don't know if what you have, if you have an opinion on that one, Jeff. I'm still at a ten on this one, also. <laughs> all right, all just right, because of his health, unfortunately. All right, I think he's just so bad off that. It's not going to happen. I'm the one to take those bets, baby. <laughs> uh -huh. Either I'm going to lose big or win big. There you go. Yeah. And now the third slide. All right. What are the odds that we get an album of as good, if not better, no matter who's there, doesn't no matter who's there, than Saints of Los Angeles from the crew? And I, and we were talking about it a little bit right now because to, to me, that was the last really good Motley Crue album are we going to get something as good? Because evidently you were bringing it up, and I've read the same type of thing where songwriting is happening right now. They're planning to put out a new album. If that happens, with all of this controversy and all of this crazy, what are the odds that we're going to get an album as good as that? I would say, in my opinion, it's less than 10%. Wow. You went low again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just... You know, even the stuff they, the new tracks they recorded and released for the dirt, mm -hmm. I, I thought were just not good. Mm -hmm. So, and, and to be honest, if the rumors are true and they're going to edge Vince out as well, do you really even want to be Motley Crue at that point? Right. You right. Know, like 6 a.m. was a great band. Yes. And, uh, you know, why not just start something fresh and, right. and do it that way? But, Obviously, the name sells. Right. So. And I'm with you. I think that all of this controversy puts a dark cloud on everything that Motley Crue is doing right now, which is very unfortunate. I'm going to give them 25. I'm going to go a little higher. And the reason that I'm doing that is because of my belief in John 5. You know, I think that John 5 could add something there that uh, might be a good thing. And I'm a fan. So just out of acknowledgement and recognition of John 5, I'm going to go as high as 25%. I don't think so. <laughs> Are you at a squadoosh at the zero? I think I'm at a zero. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's just because rock and especially their type of rock is a young man's game. Uh-huh. And without them all having their chemistry together. Yeah. And and being older with money and comfortable, they don't have the anger that you need for true Motley Crue rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, they were... They're angry young men when they had when they're at their peak, of course, of course, younger. Yeah, and I mean, I guess Aerosmith kind of captured a little bit as they got older. Yeah, but they were still younger than Motley Crue is now. Yeah, whenever they had their revival. But yes, yeah, I think it's almost impossible for them to to do anything other than just play the hits. Yeah, play the hits, baby. Right. And we're definitely talking as fans. We we do not have like a, a bright and sunny outlook for no. Motley Crue, like in all of this controversy. I would love to, just because it's Crue. Everybody, I mean, who doesn't want Crue to be awesome? Right, yeah. right. But you got to be realistic. Right. That's what sucks about getting older. You got to be realistic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take a bend in this one because I have to talk about this one. I'm sorry if this goes to a gossip show rather than a rock show, but this is the last odd slide that I have to throw in. Because it's just so damn fun to talk about Pam Anderson for me. Because you know, wah, wah. <laughs> this is not this. This is supposed to rise because it bring us up from the dark cloud. Let's talk about our bright and sunny Pam. What are the odds that Tommy Lee and Pam Anderson reunite as a couple? Zero oh. percent. <laughs> wow, that's a flat and easy zero. It's easy. I mean, I forget. I don't know her name. That like, you like. I, I've as much as you loved the first part of what we talked about today with all thrash metal, I thought that you would hate this. I thought that like oh. Kevin is gonna like reach across the table and punch me <laughs> like when the slide comes out because like the last thing and you answered it like immediately. Yeah. You were ready. That's an easy answer. <laughs> She's too I'm old for him. He <laughs> keeps going younger and younger. I love it. So I love it. If he's going to replace his current girlfriend, it's gonna be Brittany with someone Furland. younger. Brittany Furland. Brittany you're Furland. Looking, you're right. looking for the name. Yeah. Yeah. She's it, not going to allow it to happen, and then he has no need. Uh -huh. I, Tommy Lee. He honks the, the horn with his <laughs> You can't talk about Motley Crue without talking about Pam Anderson. She brought so much to Motley Crue. 
just through, of course, like all of that controversy, like back in the 90s. 25 years ago. But it's reemerged, <laughs> you know, like uh, all of this talk, yeah. which is why that I even, you know, really kind of, uh, obviously I'm a Pam fan. So like, you know, but it would be one reason to bring it up. But then the other reason is that there, that she has reemerged with Pam and Tommy coming out on Hulu. Right. And obviously distancing herself from that. She has her own Netflix documentary. Netflix, right? And then the book that she just released, which is, you know, steering away from, you know, this kind of like past life. But in that there was, you know, talk of her with Tommy Lee being the love of her life. And then she, she openly admitted that. And it was, you know, her, the, 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 the ideal relationship that she had through all of her life. So there is, you know, that fire there, particularly that could lead to a reuniting I don't know what my odds are in this one because I feel like I was going to go with you, Kevin, and be like really low. But I feel like all of that romantic talk that I just threw out there was starting to raise my odds as I was talking. And I was literally changing my mind as I was talking it out loud. I'm going to go 15% just because uh, you're a hopeless romantic. Just because you, you are. That's, that's got to be it. <laughs> well, I know my female friends are going to hate this. But Tommy Lee's not dating an old woman. <laughs> that's my point. Aging yeah. babe. She's yeah. an aging babe. No, Not she's old woman. An old woman now. <laughs> Aging babe. She looked pretty rough in the Netflix documentary. <laughs> harsh. Time, Time is so undefeated. I was, I was supposed to. I, was, <laughs> I have a mirror, so I, I know I'm not trying to say that uh, I'm immune to it because. Uh, None of us are. Yeah. We're all trying to be aging babes. We're all trying yeah. to be aging babes. I was just trying to, like, you know. Unless you're like Rob Lowe or Raquel Welch, that's, that's about. There's like five people on the planet that can age i was trying to like you know bring back a little uplift there to the gloomy motley segment but that that crashed and burned yeah. <laughs> all right well i love you pam if you're listening <laughs> i tried <laughs> all right so was that were you going to be a close out on the odds i think that was our last yeah odds. that was the last odds so uh that was cool I, I would love to do this, you know, when we get some live shows going and, and we can get Have a poll. some call-ins. No, a poll rolling. And oh, yeah. We can get the folks to the 10 people that may be watching to, to weigh in. We, we're, we're talking we we're talking a little bit at break because we all have a mutual friend. And I think he was feeling good one night and we're talking about m new music. And, you know, the way we've talked about music, new music and we'll continue to do so. Actually, like, you know, even beyond this conversation, past conversations, he heard the new Def Leppard songs. And I think he was feeling good when he heard them and he hated them. And so I get this call, this raging call about how I need to go into this podcast <laughs> and rant about how the new Def Leppard songs suck oh, <laughs> and tell the world. So Ray, Ray and I, I know a lot of Rays, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I just did it for you there, brother. How did I know that you're going to say it was Ray? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know a lot of Rays. I, I didn't narrow down the Ray. It's got to be Baby Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Which that's kind of funny because that's just one of his nicknames. So even though I know a lot of Rays, the Ray that you just narrowed it down to has at least three or four nicknames. Yeah, Green Bay Ray, uh -huh. whatever you want to call him. <laughs> I knew as soon as you said that, that's who it had to be. Definitely not Blacksburg Ray. <laughs> not Blacksburg Ray. No. <laughs> no. All, right, All right, well, so... Uh, we're going to go to the next game? We're going to go we're gonna take a, We're going to take a break? Yeah, we'll take a little quick break and come back, the and then we'll, we'll be ready to come back with Heard and Word. This slideshow will look more rock and roll the next time we do it, I promise. That's good. So lame. It's, like the pictures are good, but so you can like, so Scott, don't hold back. Cause I think it's, you know, I, I, I've, I took the blame for this. Yeah. All right. Fault. So we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> we'll be right back on the stand up and shout rock show on the wild style network fueled by monster energy.